Hello everyone. Today we're going to look at a triangle square wave generator using op amps. And here is our circuit. So we have two op amps here. The first one is configured as an integrator. So this is essentially an inverting amplifier, but we have a capacitor in the RF position. So this is going to give us a, um, an integration response, which we'll look at shortly. The output of this is a triangle wave. This then feeds a Schmidt trigger, a comparator. Now you might look at this quick and think this is an, uh, an inverting amplifier, but notice the input is coming in on the plus input, right? So this is a comparator. Schmidt trigger, basically the ratio of these two resistors, R2 and R3, is going to wind up setting the uh, positive and neg negative trigger values, okay? And the output of this, because it is a comparator, is a square wave. So this square wave then comes back and feeds the input of our integrator, right? So this is one of two levels that feeds this, right? DC levels that are gonna be at saturation. So we're either gonna see roughly plus 13 and a half or minus 13 and a half feeding this integrator. So let's do a little calculation here. So assuming saturation is plus or minus 13 and a half volts, which is a fair assumption given 15 volt power supplies, our comparator is going to trigger at that voltage times the ratio of the two resistors, right? The 7.5 and the 20K. And that's going to work out to plus and minus 5 volts, right? So when the uh, input signal goes outside that range, plus 5 and minus 5, then this output is going to switch its state, okay? So again, it's either going to go to plus or minus saturation out here. Now, that signal is fed back here. And remember, this point is a virtual ground on an inverting amplifier. So all of that voltage drops across R1. Now notice the conveniently chosen value of 13.5K. So we have 13.5 volts over 13.5K, which gets us one milliamp. That current feeds this capacitor because the input current of the op amp is small enough to ignore. So the rate of um, uh, change on the capacitor, right, dVdt is equal to I over C, in other words, one milliamp that we had coming in divided by the 50 nanofarads, which gives us 20,000 volts per second of a change. So we basically get a ramp out of this thing that's changing at 20,000 volts per second, right? Now, as a ramp, you know, eventually it's going to go from, you know, let's say a negative value to a positive value. And as it does, as it crosses the threshold on this comparator, that's going to swip, uh, swap the output of the comparator, right? It's going to switch state. So essentially, it's going to rise up to uh, plus 5 volts. This thing will switch, and then the opposite happens. All right, so this thing is going to be charging from minus 5 to plus 5, you know, down to minus 5 to plus 5, as this output is swinging back and forth, uh, you know, plus and minus saturation. So from minus 5 to plus 5, and then plus 5 to minus 5 is a total change of 20 volts. How long is that going to take? Well at 20,000 volts per second, that's going to take one millisecond. So that's the period. One over that is one kilohertz. So we expect to see a one kilohertz triangle wave coming out of here and a one kilohertz square wave coming out of here. This amplitude is about five volts peak. This about 13 and a half. So we do a little transient analysis on this. And here is what we get. All right, so you can see this triangle wave is coming up we get to a certain value, we get to this plus five, and then the output of the comparator changes state, right? Goes high. Um, this drives the, uh, the input to the integrator, which again, because it's inverting, that, that signal goes in the opposite direction. When it gets to the negative value, again, the comparator switches state, goes negative. That drives the uh, capacitor again you know, with the current source, and we see the rising, and this just keeps repeating, repeating, repeating. So you can see, all right, um, the, the green is the triangle output, and there we are, just about 5 volts. And the sort of maroon here is the square wave, and we can see that's just right around 13 and a half, okay? Timing. Well, um, our time base over here is millisecond, so you can see this is just about 1 millisecond. All right, here's the transition from here to here to there. It's just about a millisecond consistently. So yes, we are in fact getting one kilohertz. 
So that's a, a fairly simple kind of circuit to generate both squares and triangles.